What's going on everyone, ODC here, and I'm back with another action figure review. Today's review, we're gonna take a look at the Mythic Legion's Legion Builder Wave Deluxe Dwarf Legion Builder. Now that was a mouthful. Um, <laughs> this is kind of, they consider it the Deluxe Legion Builder Wave. I just kind of call it the Legion Builder Wave just because they say these are deluxe figures, but mm, I don't know. They don't necessarily come with a whole lot to consider them to be deluxe. Like they've offered deluxe Legion builders in the past and it's been like the deluxe Knight Builder, the the d deluxe like Templar Knight, the, what was it? The, not Templar Knight, but the deluxe Knight Builder, the female Knight Builder. Um, so to kind of call this a deluxe wave, I don't know if it's necessarily warranted. I would say this is a Legion Builder wave. Um, I've seen other Legion Builders that have come with the same amount of accessories and same amount of paint apps. Um, now, all Legion Builders usually do come with very minimal paint apps, which is why they're perfect for either army building or customizing. Um, and you can pretty much paint these any way you want. For the majority of the figures uh, for Legion Builders, they usually are, um, pretty they take pretty well to paint um to um any sort of acrylic flat paint um they take very well to those so if you are a customizer I, i've been trying to customize a little bit more and more every day that goes by and getting better at painting and being patient and staying with inside the lines and stuff like that which stuff is stuff i was never good at especially having patience for doing something tedious um that's just a part of my ADD. But anyway, I digress. Um, he doesn't really come with too much. Um, like I said, the paint apps on him that are on him are minimal. Uh, I want to say, for the most part, the majority of the paint apps are on the head itself. Uh, from what you see is what you get. Um, you have the horns that are painted. You do have the helmet that is painted, this nice kind of copper tone. And then you have the clasps on his... Um, beard there um everything else is just a plastic um other than that so you pretty much are just uh getting a lot of plastic here that like i said whether you want to army build these guys and just kind of leave them plain jane like this or if you want to uh, maybe get one and customize them into like a specific character that you could make up um, that's kind of the bread and butter of this these type of figures um the um, weapons that he does come with, he comes with this kind of war hammer, which does have removable pieces, so you can interchange it only on one side, though, not on both sides. So this piece can't come off. It's just the one side. Um, you can flip this hook to this side, or you can flip it upward. It doesn't matter which way you put it, really. It's all entirely up to you. Um, but uh, maybe it's like a good like little beer opener. You can beer can open that, you know? <laughs> I definitely don't recommend to do that, but it'd be funny. Uh, this is something that you could definitely use some some black paint shading. I feel like uh, even some silver for this kind of like, uh, I guess we'll call this the door opener, the key to the city. Um, I feel like this is something that you would like pry open. We'll just call the whole hammer the key to the city. How's that? You hit it with this side and then you pry it open with that side. Or you can use it as some sort of spike or stabby tool. Um, but this is definitely, like I said, something that could be used for, um, some paint shading and some customization there. Next up, we have the ax. Um, this is a really nice ax that we've got in the past. We've got this with wave two. Um, I know for uh, quite a while I was, I had Atlas with this ax and, um, it's a very nicely sculpted, well-proportioned, um, ax no any no paint on this at all so like i said you could go ahead and fill out the design which i might do i'm not sure what color i'd do maybe a red or maybe a black or i don't know we'll figure that out when i get to that <laughs> but um this is a, definitely something that could use some paint um next up we have the um shield excuse me the wave two shield with the wave two kind of handle which it comes apart in two pieces 
Um, this is all just like one plastic color. So all of these are just plastic. There's no paint apps available on the accessories for the most part. Um, and just flipping it around, you can see the design. This is definitely something they could use some more paint. Um, I might actually go through and paint this brown um, just because that looks wooden to me. And then you could go with the copper for the rest of the metal portions. And last up, we have the obligatory, which now I've noticed are, are not this, this belt and uh, sheath loop here, or whatever you want to call it, a holster loop, um, is no longer being available with the newer style figures. Uh, so maybe they're ceasing um, on giving us this, but I have noticed that uh, a couple of characters like, um, what was it, Bardrick could have actually used one of these. He comes with a lot of accessories and there's not a whole lot of places to kind of put them. Sure, they come with newly sculpted belts, they have uh, loops, but there's only so many of the loops that you can use to really store everything and store it properly. So these still are do come in handy. I just wish they would kind of update the sculpt of them a little bit and offer maybe just another one with like an actual sheath attached to it that you can put a sword or something in there. Um, these are still welcomed, but um, uh, you know, maybe get uh, some new tooling with that. That would be nice. The figure itself um, looks really good. Uh, the head itself, let me just pop the head off. It's probably going to come off with the next pe neck piece, and the, the uh, we'll get to the horns in a second. The head sculpt itself looks really good. I really like this beard. It looks very nicely done, nicely sculpted, and I really like the gold for uh, gold accents for the little beard clasps, whatever you want to call those. And they are a gold where the helmet is more of a copper. And I believe that this is actually two pieces. So you have a plastic for the beard that connects to the head, which is a copper plastic. So you have two different uh, things there. This is also something that you use some black paint shading going throughout, or you could paint it brown if you wanted to. Uh, personally, I don't mind the darkness. It's kind of almost like a, 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 like a bluish uh, black for the, the uh, beard here. Um, maybe it's my eyes playing tricks on me, but uh, it looks a little bit, maybe actually grayish black. Um, so, but uh, there's no pupils in there in the uh, eye holes or anything like that. It's just a black pupil. And you do have your horns, which you can set up any way you want. You can set them up this way. You can set them up that way. Whatever you want to do, they just kind of plug in and they swivel. So if you want to do something funky like like this maybe you could just, you could do that that is that is quite unique right there um you definitely don't want to go downward i don't think that would make much sense but you could do this if you really wanted to um <laughs> looks like tendrils coming out of his head when you do it like that um you could even have them more pointed in the center if you want to have them almost like touching like this that's a little bit something different too so world is your oyster your figure set it up any way you want as far as the body goes um, like i said the neck piece is a separate piece just pop that off um, it's angled forward just due to the smaller bodies for these like dwarf and um, goblin type characters they usually have the neck peg kind of pushed forward so they make room for the beard or whatever else is sculpted for the head very well engineered um, as far as the pauldrons go, they're just pretty much wave one pauldrons, nothing too special there. Um, I mean, I'll just show them really quickly. There's the design and everything. We've seen it plenty of times in the past. The, uh, upper torso is the, I want to say very similar to the Magnus torso, if not the same as the Magnus torso. On the back, there's some rivets and stuff like that being sculpted for the armor and such. The belt is... I want to say same thing as Magnus's belt and everything like that. Um, so it's nice to see some differentiation with the Wave 1 arms on the Magnus body with the um, newer belt and all of that. We've got a Wave 1 kind of armored, I don't know, cod piece here. And then we have Wave 1 dwarf feet and legs. So 
or goblin wigs, whatever you want to call them. <laughs> but it's nice to have another dwarf. Um, they're always welcomed, whether they're good guys or bad guys. This guy is actually a good guy. He is a part of the clan of Leo Odysseus. Um, so you can have him set up with them if you want to, or you can put them wherever you want, really. Like I said, world is your oyster. You don't have to have anything set up a specific way. But if you like to follow the, the rules and go with the, the mythos, then you can. Um, as far as his articulation does go, his head can swivel a little, a little bit back and forth. Um, it's very hindered due to the sculpting of the beard, obviously, but he can swivel a little bit as far as moving it. It does look a little bit weird from the side just due to the sculpt of the neck, but you can move it around. Um, you can't really look up too much. It's just kind of like a little bit like, that's it. Um, down, um, no jive turkeys. There's no gobbles here available. Uh, arms go up about that far. They go down, full 360 rotation in the arm without the pauldrons. With the pauldrons on, let's go ahead and pop that one of these on. Bam. And it's going to definitely move the pauldron, but you can still actually get decent range of motion with that if you need to. Um, the Let me get this back off. A single bend at the elbow, which is less than 90 degrees. A swivel at the elbow. Swivel at the gauntlet. Swivel at the wrist. He does have a, a, a lateral hinge joint. Excuse me, I almost said vertical. A lateral hinge joint on both sides. They're both uh, symmetrical with each other. The uh, torso can crunch. It's on a ball joint. It can crunch forward and back like that. It can pivot a little bit side to side. It can swivel as well. He can uh, pretty much Van Dam it right here. So, whichever Van Dam you're talking about, Rob Van Dam or Jean Claude Van Dam, whichever. <laughs> legs go forward, legs go back. He does have a single bend at the knee, which is just under 90 degrees as well. Um, swivel at the knee. He can pointy toe, pointy heel, left, right, as far as the pivots go. So, he does have ankle pivot, and he can also swivel at the top of the ankle. Uh, so, Decent um, articulation. It's nothing crazy new that we haven't seen before with Mythic Legions. So it's pretty much just the typical. Um, I wish these elbows had more range of motion. These being at maybe just at, yeah, it's, they're under 90 degrees. I feel like at least an elbow, if it's a single hinged elbow, it should get to at least 90 degrees. In this day and age where you know, black series figures can get more, way more than 90 degrees. I mean, you look at Dega Baluk and you can get his arm almost all the way touching his shoulder. Uh, it's pretty crazy. Um, I would expect some sort of new tooling with um, some Mythic Legions in the future. I, I mean, I at least hope that that's what they're, they'll do in the future. So hopefully, I'm holding out hope that we get some better range of motion in the future for these guys. Um, especially some of the dwarfs, because you want them to be able to like look natural while they're swinging their axe or their warhammer or whatever, um, swinging their sword, whatever. You want them to be able to hike way back and kind of hold it as a natural pose and not just be as limited as this, which is, like I said, under 90 degrees. I mean, this would be about 90 degrees if you really push it, but I don't want to snap the hinge or anything like that, so... I don't know. It's just something that uh, a point of contention that I've I've been saying for since you know wave two. Uh, I've been saying you know I hope that we get something new in the future with range of motion, and we really kind of haven't gotten it. But personally, like I said, he can hold everything in his hand. He's perfectly fine in that uh, manner. Um, no issues there. So if you want to have him set up with the you know the axe or the and the what you call it the uh, shield you could do so if you wanted to so there's his shield he's he's ready to go he is ready to go slaughter some goblins and some some bad bad people <laughs> all right first up as far as size comparisons go we've got two black series figures we've got uh, zuckus on the left and then we've got the archive x-wing pilot luke all right, next up, we've got two NECA figures in uh, both Predators. On the right, we've got the Enforcer Predator. And then on the left, we've got the Ultimate Stalker Predator. 
Okay, next up we've got uh, two G.I. Joe classifieds. On the right, we've got Zartan, and on the left, we've got Duke. All right, next up we've got two McFarland figures. Uh, one on the right, which is Red Hood from the Three Jokers line from the DC Multiverse. And then on the left, we've got Soul Crusher from the Spawn line. Okay, next up we've got two Articulated Icons Ninjas. Uh, we've got the Martial Artist on the right, and then we have the Blue Ninja on the left. All right, next up we've got two SH Figure Arts action figures. We've got Padme Amidala on the right, and then on the left we've got Kamen Rider Black RX. Okay, next up we've got two Marvel Legends. We've got Quicksilver on the right, and then we have Shocker on the left. All right, and last up we've got two Mythic Legions. We've got, on the left we've got Magnus, and then on the right we've got Shaw, get in heavens, brand. Okay, so for my final thoughts on the Deluxe Legion Builder Dwarf, action figure um it's gonna run you around 45 dollars on big bad toy store and most secondary markets i'm not speaking for all of them but most of them um that's a little bit of the upcharge from what they were which i think was around 28 dollars or so give or take um uh i would say for the lack of paint apps $45. I mean, it's only $5 less than the upcharge, the normal upcharge for a regular release. I feel like maybe they should have just added more paint apps and upcharge like they were supposed to. Maybe these go for 30 bucks now. I don't know. Um, Legion Builders, I, I was so used to them being around anywhere from 22 to 25 bucks. Um, so, but personally, I don't know. 45 bucks, I would pass. Um, I'll go ahead and I'll give it a one thumb up as far as a recommendation. Um, just, it's the, the sheer blandness of his body from the neck down that really kind of, I think, doesn't make it a $45 purchase. And I don't think $45 action figures are army builders. At that stage, you're buying a, what should be to me, an actual character figure not an army builder and i'm just being truthful i'm being honest and i'm being truthful um there's nothing wrong with the figure the figure works fine um i don't have any you know breakage issues i haven't had one mythic legion break on me yet and i've been collecting since wave one so um i don't have any issues uh as far as function goes um, aesthetically, it's a little bit bland, a, a little bit too bland for my taste, even whether it's the weapons or like I said, it's just the, the blandness of the, he's essentially just a gray plastic figure, um, except for the cod piece, obviously. But, um, I don't know. That's just what I think. Um, personally, uh, I would say pass on it unless I, like I said earlier, um, you are a customizer or, you know, a kit basher. So um, personally, I would stay focused on some of the mainstay characters. Um, th I got this guy, what was it? Because I did, I went through the pre-order, which made him a lot cheaper, but still I'm probably going to make him into his own character. I only bought one of each from the wave and I'm pretty happy with how each look um, for the most part, but uh, I'm going to stick to my one thumb up here and I'm going to say pass on him, especially now that he's reached the secondary market and the online retail market. Um, buying Legion Builders outside of pre-orders is really just not worth it, to be honest with you. Um, and then buying them on the secondary market, which would be eBay, is even worse. So, all right. And I thought uh, I'd do something a little bit different, a little bit special. Let me get uh, Zartan's thing out of here. Um, <laughs> towards the end of the review here, just, um, just to kind of show you the differences that you can do on your own. Um, I'm not, a, a, I don't consider myself a very good painter at all. Um, but I don't know, just the little subtle details that you can add to, uh, a Legion builder just to make them that much more unique and special. Um, I feel like if you're just adding paint to these figures, it does make them look so much more unique, so much more special. Um, I actually had some 3D printed stuff that I showed in a couple other videos 
Um, the sword, I have the sword here that I decided to paint up finally. Um, this, this ax, and these are really old 3D printed things I just had kind of lying around. I think I bought this when I bought wave one of um, Mythic Legions, uh, wave one. Um, these are a brittle plastic, but um, just certain things that you can do, just adding simple paints just to make things look a little bit better. Um, and as you saw in the review, this was a very basic, basically painted figure, if that. I mean, I don't even think there's much paint on him at all. Sorry, my dogs are barking. They do that. Uh, <laughs> but the legs, I added some accents in. Um, I actually went with a metallic silver. I don't know what's going on with these dogs. <laughs> they reacted nuts. Um, I painted the chainmail black. Um, I didn't want to go with a silver, obviously, just because it would have blended in too much with the already kind of glossy silver plastic that went with it. No, I shouldn't say glossy silver plastic, but metallic silver plastic. Um, I went with a lighter metallic silver for the, um, for the, uh, sorry, the knee armor and the armor going downward. Let me actually get a pointer so I'm, you can actually see what I'm talking about here without my finger getting in the way. Um, for the armor right here, focus. For the armor right here, I did this the same uh, silver as this, as in that and that. And then I just painted the stripes on the side red. Um, I painted all the rivets black. It really just pulls a lot of stuff out of the sculpt. It's just simply just hidden because there's no paint. Uh, same thing here. I just kind of made everything kind of match a little bit. And for the pauldrons as well, I did the same kind of metallic silver. So it does step apart a little bit. Um, and then for the chest, I went with the red rivets instead of black rivets. Same thing for the back. Um, I even did some a little bit of black fill-in work for the slashes and gashes. Kind of pulls the um, sculpt out a little bit more as well. Um, I painted all the rivets on here uh, silver. And then the head, I just kind of left. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this head. I might just leave it um, just because I don't think it needs much paint work. I think the way it is is perfectly fine. But uh, I also went with the shield. The shield was very basic and I just kind of went actually with a lighter tan for the wood. Um, I could have went with a darker brown, but I felt like it would have blended in too much with the copper. And then I just painted the black, uh, the rivets black and such. I might go over a little bit of black paint with just these scars and stuff and whatever slash marks. But for the most part, um, for the belt, the belt piece, um, I painted all of the chainmail black. Um, I actually went with an olive drab for the claw, uh, the fur kind of growing out, and I think it actually turned out quite well. Normally, people would just go with a brown, but I was like, you know what? There's, there's, I don't want to do what everybody else does. Let's go with a little bit of something different um, with the olive drab, and then I went with the red just to kind of pull some of the rest of the red out of the sculpt as well. Um, and then finally, um, the axe. The battle axe is very basic. Um, I went with the olive drab for the kind of design. And then I went with like a emerald green, flat emerald green for the little gem in there. Pulls more of that, those little details that kind of get lost in the shuffle when it's all just a um, plastic copper uh, tone. Uh, and then I painted the top of the axe black and the bottom of it black as well. And I kind of went with like a sloppy wash. I wanted this to look a little bit like it's kind of been battle worn. So I went with like a sloppy, not really a wash, but a sloppy paint job. I did that kind of on purpose just because I didn't want everything to look crisp and clean. Like he's kind of been through battle. I'm still kind of figuring out if I want to add some blood effect here. I may or may not, I don't know. But um, that's pretty much the ax in a nutshell. And I just kind of wanted to show this in pieces. I'm gonna assemble them all and uh, we'll be right back. We'll take a look and we'll do a little comparison from what you saw in the beginning of the review and now the end of the review with brand new paint apps. All right, and we're back with him all fixed up here. Um, I just gotta add the pauldrons on here. I figured I'd do that on camera, why not? 
and these are just the finishing touches. And because he is a part of the clan of Leo Odysseus, I figured, you know what, let's make him a little bit more like something that would be a part of that clan. Um, while he does have his copper, um, and Leo Odysseus, you know, the, the clan of Leo Odysseus is a little bit more of a flashy clan, you know, where the, um, the house of noble bear is a little bit more like blue collar. You know, the Leo Odysseus, they, they seem a little bit more like they're flashy. So I figured why not make a little bit more of a flashier character? And that's what I think I have here. Um, I'd like to go with maybe a, eventually a little bit more of a, because uh, now this is kind of a character on his own, maybe a little bit more of a visceral looking ax for him or something like that, because giving him another, you know, war hammer is kind of, you know, everybody gets a war hammer, but um, I don't know. Now I think he fits kind of fits that mark. Um, everything kind of flows evenly. I want to say, uh, while it's, you know, is different from each other that we've got some reds mixed with some greens mixed with some, you know, some tans and coppers and reds and metallic silvers and regular silver and black. And so we've got a, a plethora of different colors here just with this one character. And I feel like, oh my God, it's like such a night and day difference. Um, even the metallics I added for the uh, elbow armor um, and in the inside of the elbow armor and just definitely painting in the blacks for the chainmail, I think really helps this figure almost look like a regular released figure. Um, so I'm really happy with how he turned out, how he looks, the horns and everything. Um, yeah, it's just very simple. Simple stuff to do. You can do it yourself. I can do it. You can do it. Um, nothing too crazy here. I didn't have any sort of 3D printer or sculptor or anything like that. Um, it's just painting. Just simple painting. Um, I'd like to get into something a little bit more complex, like painting full armors and stuff like that down the line, maybe when I have more paints and such. But for right now, I think this will just fit the bill for this character, and uh, maybe we'll move on to another character at another time. But I wanted to do a little bit of a before and after for the video and make this thing look a little bit more special than just a, another Legion Builder. Haven't figured out a name for this guy yet, but um, I think of something down the road and maybe I'll make a little update video on him. But uh, for now, I just wanted to add this in and I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll see you guys on the flip side.